right, everybody, January 24th, we're going to be talking about some severe weather that is just starting to brew up around Louisiana, Arkansas, parts of Mississippi, and eastern Texas. We're also going to talk about what that might turn into over the next day and a half. This looks fun. And we are also going to touch base on our earthquake situation, another very large earthquake striking Argentina just moments ago in the same exact area where we had that 6.8 just four days ago. But we will start off with that severe weather because because this thing's not only going to affect the southeast as well as where it's affecting now, but it's going to spiral up into the northeast. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But as you and I talk right now, there's an active tornado warning in Chambers, Harris, Liberty, Texas. We've been seeing these pop up all day long. A lot of them expired. Not many formed, if any, from what I know as of right now. But the point of the matter is that this system is just starting to fire up. As you can see here on the GOES satellite image, this line right here is what we're kind of looking at. You're kind of seeing it form in real time and it's going to kind of peak right over Louisiana and then move its way up through Mississippi parts of Arkansas. We may see some of this even move up into Kentucky and Tennessee as far as the tornado warnings go. Now this is what's taking place over the next day and a half. We're looking at current time right now. So you can see that yellow strip right there. That's where the severe weather is in Texas. That's where we're getting these tornado warnings out of. If we jump one frame into the beginning of tomorrow, we can see that that area broadens out pretty significantly. It's going to bring a lot of severe weather to northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and again moving into the Mississippi area and again could affect areas of western Tennessee and Kentucky. And the reason I say could affect Tennessee and Kentucky is because you can see we have a winter storm warning that's stretching over about six or seven states right now. So that's where that warm and cold air is meeting. So if this severe weather makes it up that far, chances are it won't be as severe as far as the tornado producing weather. When it makes it up towards this direction, chances are it'll be too cool for those types of things to happen but again take a look at the strip of winter weather that we're dealing with as well and it's almost two separate systems and I'm going to talk about how they're going to move up into the northeast and pretty much peak out on Thursday and you can kind of see what I'm talking about right here on the GFS map this brings us into the 26th which is Thursday that low pressure system just over the Great Lakes this is just the precipitation map if I change this over to snow and ice you're going to see how that winter storm is definitely going to be affecting the western side of this low pressure system once again, bringing down that cold Canadian air. That's how these always work. It's this time of year, the severe weather in the southeast or even in the Gulf states. And then those systems move right up the coastline. This could have been a nor'easter had it been a little more to the east, but it's looking like that low pressure again is going to sit right over the Great Lakes. We're talking lake effect snow. Buffalo will probably be involved in this as they always are. Ontario may see a decent amount of snow, but it's looking right now based on the way the jet stream is kind of formed and the amount of of warm air being pulled up the eastern seaboard we might not see a lot of snow when it comes to the immediate northeast i mean like the coastal eastern states now when we switch over to what this could produce as far as ice and snow we're looking at a different story so once again we'll backtrack and bring it to current time this is what we're dealing with right now that's why texas has been seeing all these tornado warnings this will continue into tomorrow and even get more severe i'm sure i'll be briefly touching on this as well but look just above the severe weather you see all this blue here that is why that wind winter storm strip that we just looked at is settling right in that area. That's where that warm and cold air is mixing and that's what could potentially prevent this from affecting Tennessee and Kentucky in the same way as that it's going to be affecting, for example, Mississippi, Louisiana, and that southeastern part of Arkansas. So again, just to explain what I'm talking about here, that's why we have this line here. This winter storm warning stretching all the way up to the Great Lakes and then the severe weather taking place down in the Gulf states where the air is a lot warmer. So it's really all going to be about timing once this low pressure system starts rolling its way up to the east. As we get back to the GFS, you can kind of visualize that chart we were just looking at. It's all going to depend on where that cold air is meeting that warm gulf air as to what states are going to get hit with what type of snow. So I wanted to explain a little bit of why you see that line of multiple states under winter storm warnings. It's because this low pressure system is bringing that snow with it. The jet stream is dipped down far enough to where all this cold air is coming down and the only warm part of the country right now is basically what you're seeing down in Texas and the Gulf. And then you can kind of draw a straight line right across the Carolinas. This is where the warm air is. And then everything to the west of this until you get into the western states, obviously, is that cold air trapped in the down dip of the jet stream. And then as we move up, you see how that storm kind of follows that exact path. So it's a little hard to determine snow totals right now. Like I said, I'm kind of giving a broad forecast right now of what to expect. This low pressure system will certainly be moving up to the northeast. But a lot of people were asking me what's 
to deal with all these states under a winter storm warning, and that is because this thing is going to be rolling up over the next day and a half, putting each of these states in that winter storm warning. And checking back on the tornado situation, it looks like this thing is going to expire out without a tornado. Of course, the possibility is going to be there, but the thing is, you're going to see a lot more of these as the day progresses because this system just began to form as I showed you on the previous charts, but Texas has had a bunch of come and go tornado warnings over the day, and being that the weather's only going to get worse, start looking for those tornado warnings in Louisiana. That's going to be the prime state for the next at least 18 hours when it comes to the most severe of this severe weather. All right, now, just before making this video, we had a 6.4 pop-up in a familiar spot that we have just been talking about quite literally four days ago. We had a 6.8 in Argentina. In fact, I'll bring that one up right here. You can see right down here a 6.8, 610 kilometers in depth. That's over 300 miles deep. Very, very deep earthquake. And I warned that we could be seeing larger, shallower earthquakes in that area. But just four days later, take a look at this. A 6.4 just moments ago, 610 kilometers in depth. So there is something going on deep down inside Argentina right now in the same exact location, give or take 50 miles, I think it is. But if we zoom back out here, over the last seven days, we've seen some significant earthquakes, specifically this one we spoke about and had a video on near the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands. I actually gave a warning to Florida over this earthquake because the last time we had large earthquakes in this area, Florida experienced some verified earthquakes. Even though you didn't see them on the USGS, the seismograms picked them up and they were confirmed earthquakes. That is in fact why I like to use this chart instead, Volcano Discovery, because you can actually see in real time what people are feeling on the ground, whether it's a sonic boom, they do come back and readjust some of these earthquakes to show that they may have been sonic booms or some other type of explosion, but people can come on here immediately, and if I change this to all magnitudes, you can quickly see that people definitely do that. But again, the main point here is that we are still seeing large earthquakes take place, and I gotta say, I am concerned about this Argentina area, because specifically Chile and the western part of South America has been known to produce some of the biggest earthquakes in the world, and if there's stuff going on that deep and this strong, deep down in Argentina, we could see Chile or any of these South American countries pop off at any any moment. So that's a heads up for those of you that follow the earthquake stuff. Again, we got that severe weather as of right now. This is the current frame. This is what we're looking at. This line right here is where you're going to start seeing the severe weather. That's exactly where these tornado warnings are, and it's only going to move right into Louisiana. So that is the heads up for Louisiana, and then moving forward, we will update you as we see this low pressure system begin to form and meet up with the winter storm warnings that we looked at in the previous chart. All right, my friends, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this this video shout out to Canada wish me luck on my trip Thursday it should be an interesting one I hope you're all having a good afternoon early evening wherever you may be and I will see you all in the next video take care bye bye stop right there my friends if you have not already click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon click all and you will get all notifications from this channel and trust me you won't be disappointed